So we are going to look at the scholarships available for both undergraduate studies and postgraduate studies. I've had a lot of requests asking me to talk more about postgraduate studies. So henceforth, I will start creating more content with regards to the postgraduate studies with sorry, with undergraduate studies. So before you start, it's very important you know the programs the university is offering. You, all you have to do is to just Google the name of the university, which in this time was University of British Columbia. I already have the tabs open to make things easier. So like once you Google, this is the first one that comes for you to use. So let's look at the programs they have available. They have tons of programs here and they have two campuses. So Vancouver or Okanagan, I'm not too sure if that's how it's pronounced, based on what's of interest to you. You select and look at the program requirement. Today, this is not my focus, but if you want me to go into details about how to apply and all that, let me know in the comment section. And in the subsequent videos, I'm going to go through the process of applying to the university. So once you decide on the program you want to apply, now let's look at the scholarships being the scholarships available. I'll leave the links in the description box for easy access. So one thing you should know is that they actually offer three types of scholarships. Two of these scholarships are merit-based awards. That means your grade or your transcript is important. There's the International Major Entrance Scholarship and there's the Outstanding International Student Award. This scholarship can be renewed for up to three years, so you could actually have it for your four years of education once you maintain your good grades because it's a merit-based award. What is the eligibility? You have to be new to the university, you have to be an international student, and you have to demonstrate exceptional academic achievement. If you get nominated for this third scholarship called the International Scholarship, you can't be eligible for these two types of scholarships. So you have to decide which of them works for you. The good thing is you don't actually have to submit an extra um, application. Once you apply to university, you're automatically considered. Just like the IMES, the OIS is also uh, merit-based, so you need to have good grades. Unfortunately, this is just a one-time scholarship. So once you get it, when you enter into the university, you can't renew that. And also, the requirement is just not your grades. You have to have demonstrated like extracurricular activities outside of the classroom. So if you are somebody who has done a lot of voluntary work, it's important to highlight these in your application process. The deadline is January 15th, so you still have some time to work towards this. And you will be considered for this scholarship shortly after you receive an offer of admission to UBC. So by mid-March and end of April, you should know if you have this scholarship or not. Now let's look at the other one, the International Scholar. This is a need-based and a merit-based scholarship. So you have to demonstrate that you actually need that scholarship and you have to have good grades. So these are like past scholars. There are four different types of scholarship for the international scholar. And you don't choose exactly which one you want once you apply for it. They will choose based on your profile, which best suits you. And this is the caveat. You can't apply yourself. You need to be nominated by a university or an NGO. So it's important that um, you could actually send the university an email asking them what are some of the universities or what are the name of universities or, or NGO which can nominate you to become an international scholar. They are the requirements that you just need to take your time to read through. For the 2022, that's next year is closed. So like if it's something that you're interested in, you could start working on that so that 
next two years you could actually apply for this so these are the deadlines december 1st january 30 like these are december 1st by december 1st you should have applied for that and by mid april you should know whether you got it or not so that's it for the undergraduate scholarship there are three types the imes the ys and the international scholar now let's look at the postgraduate degrees so that's the masters or the phd it's important to check if the program you want to apply is being offered by the university so you look at the graduate degree programs and you go through all the pro programs they have they have so many of them so based you can use a filter based on the faculty based on the degree level you just choose the mode of delivery the program type like there are so many of them here you choose as is of interest to you this is not my focus today so now let's look at the scholarships they have there are two types of campus there's the one in vancouver and there's the one in okanagan so they also have merit and need based the good thing about uh, I don't know if it's something all Canadian universities do, but even if you don't get a scholarship to enter into university, once you're in the university, there are so many scholarships or awards that you can get during your program. So this is like you didn't get into the you didn't get a scholarship into the university, but you're already there. These are some of the scholarships that you can have, the award opportunities. This is a but this is not my focus today. Today we want to look at the incoming scholarships. So this is for Okanagan campus. These are the award opportunities. You just have to choose incoming student. Open. You choose your level, either masters or doctoral. Then they give you all the options are available and how much each is. There's this other type of scholarship, that's a research assistant. These are, then the professors have research projects and you can apply to work on these research projects. Once you are selected, you are sure that you are going to get funding because these already have money. So these are some of the currently open research projects. A lot of them are into the pharmaceutical sciences and medicine, like I keep on getting emails or messages saying that i'm in medical school like what are some of the scholarships available for medical school there are so many of them here either for postdoc or phd if you're interested in the master's students you choose and they give you the options available and this is the other options where they give you faculty members recruiting students like this person has money and is looking for students to work with you have to take your time and go through and whichever the project areas, whichever interests you, you just go to the supervisor's page, get his email and try and contact him. If you would want me to make a video on how to contact supervisors, let me know and I will do just that and the final thing is for phd students there's this new policy that came into being this year september once you get accepted into university of british columbia you have a minimum funding of 20 i think it's twenty thousand. yeah twenty thousand for each of the first four years so even if you don't get a supervisor if you don't get a research project once you apply to the university and you get admitted for a phd you are short of 20,000 and in 2023 they aim to increase it to 22,000 so this is really good for PhD students you should check out like what UBC has like if there's a program that's of interest to you and do apply so that's it for today's video if you have any questions leave it in the comment section if you need any extra help um do let me know and um kindly subscribe to my channel if you've not yet done that and do share it with your networks um till we meet again